Who's your favorite pit master's favorite pit master? Q fans, it's your boy here, Way Morris, owner of Pitmaster Tremendous Q, and today we are welcoming you guys all the way from Belgium. It is our first video here from Europe, okay? As you guys know, I'm active duty military, and we have finally finished our PCS from Alabama to Mons, Belgium, all right? Now, today I'm going to be kicking off our first video here in Europe, here in Belgium, with some spare ribs on the Gorilla Grills Kong, and I am super excited to show you guys this entire process all right we're going to be crawl walk run all right i'm going to show you guys everything from peeling the membrane all the way to fall off the bone ribs now for all my new subscribers or the new bubbas that are coming to the channel for the first time i thank you guys for clicking on the video go ahead and smash the subscribe button and cut on notifications so you get notified when i drop all the latest content for all my current subscribers thank you i would thank you guys for returning i thank you guys for uh being patient during this little hiatus and i promise to get these videos back going on a routine basis all right so with that said let's jump right into this video all right so for your rib prep you're gonna need three essentials all right your knife your paper towel and your plastic bag and the plastic bag is essentially a garbage bag just leave it on the counter so you can get rid of your paper towel dirty paper towel after you remove the membrane as well as the wrap that the uh, ribs come in so i'm going to speed through this first membrane removal all right you cannot chew through this and it does not render down so you want to get rid of it okay but i'm also going to show you guys here right now on the bottom left hand corner is a rib with the membrane still on and on the top is with it removed you basically it's smooth versus rough that's how you can tell whether or not the membrane is still going to be on the rib okay i personally have bought a couple of ribs with the membrane already removed and when it's in the packaging for a while uh, sometimes it can be really smooth and look like the membrane is still on but you go to try to pull it off and you just get nothing this other thing you want to do as far as your rib prep goes is get rid of this flappy meat right here on the end essentially all it's going to do is burn and then it also makes it difficult for your ribs to fit on your pit because typically your grapes are not going to be as long as these ribs are with this little bit of meat so look for that small bone go to sometimes three in depending on how flimsy it is go ahead and cut through the meat and just square the ribs off okay that's a little bit more of a, t a technical term but essentially that's what you're doing is you're squaring your ribs off and getting rid of that flimsy meat that's going to do nothing but burn when you put it on the pit all right with that done, go ahead and get them rubbed down. And with your favorite rub, make sure you are very generous with it, okay? And with that, you should be ready to head to the pit. All right, so we got our pit warmed up. It was warming up while we were prepping our ribs and then we're going to place the ribs on the Kong, on this Kamado cooker and we're going to put them on my top rack. Yes, I can do them on the bottom, but for the purposes of the video and obviously just ease, it's a lot easier to cook with both of them on the top rack. rack. That way I'm not flipping. Also, the bottom rack, because it's right above the diffuser plates, it tends to get, those tend to cook a little bit quicker and get a little bit darker. So just be mindful of that if you're cooking on the cone. You want to make sure that the ribs on the bottom, you can either rotate them after you wrap them or just make sure you pay attention to them, okay? So we got the ribs on. I want to show you guys, pause right here and right here. The ribs are going to shrink. They're extended over the edge of the rack right now. But after probably about an hour into the cook, you're gonna see that the ribs are gonna to start to shrink. The meat's gonna pull back and those ribs are going to be all the way on the grate. It's not gonna be extending over the edge. See? So that's pretty cool. And that's it's basically just the meat doing its thing. It's the, the, the collagen and the connective tissue inside the meat is constricting and starting to render. And that's exactly what you're looking for. So at a little bit over an hour in, I'm gonna let them go for a couple more minutes and then it's time to wrap. Make sure you wrap before you get to that color you're looking for because they will continue to get a little bit darker, okay? But go ahead and add butter, light brown sugar, apple juice, or honey. You can use either one or you can add both, pick your poison. I promise it will all turn out great, okay? 
Get both of your ribs wrapped up and then throw them back on the grill for probably another hour and a half-ish. Um, you're looking at in between three hours to three and a half hours for the cook process, and then it's time to temp. Okay, and for the temperature on these ribs, you're gonna be looking at, for that fall off the bone, you're gonna be looking for around that 201, 202 range. You can even go a little bit higher, um, if we're gonna be honest with you. It really just depends on the ribs, but what you wanna start doing is checking for tenderness once they get to that 201, 202 mark, okay? Each rib is gonna be a little bit different, so you're gonna have to play with them like you see me doing here with the foil, I'm lifting it up, and I'm trying to see how much give the rib, is, uh, the rib has, okay? This particular, this particular rack was higher, it came out in at about 205, 206-ish. But again, it's all gonna be based on the individual rack. Every pig is a little bit different. So make sure you use that, that probe. I got my Thermapen. And then make sure you also give that field test. And once you are satisfied with that, with that pull, that tenderness, go ahead and put them off, pull them off and give them, give them some time to rest. What I'm doing here is I'm just double checking this rack. When I picked it up off the foil, it didn't have as much bend as I thought it was going to. So I'm just checking by pulling on the individual bones and making sure that the tenderness that I'm looking for is there before I go ahead and pull them off and uh, let them rest. Because if you don't get this right out the gate, you can't put them back on a grill. Well, I mean, you could, yeah, I guess you can do anything, <laughs> um, but it probably wouldn't turn out very good, okay? So let's go ahead, we got them rested. We got them on the cut, the good old chopping board. Let's see what, let's see how these ribs turned out, all right? And we're gonna cut it right in the middle of these racks. This is personally where I like to, especially during the competition, uh, I like to get more towards the meteor end, but I start cutting in the middle because these are gonna wrap, these are gonna be the individual bones that you turn in. But we're not doing a competition today, we're <laughs> checking out fall off the bone at home ribs, all right? So here's some of that doneness. There's that color that you're looking for. You can see some of the juice start to rendering, especially up towards that fat, old fat and gristle. Let's see how the bite is. And it is bite through, boom, boom. There you go. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Now, for those who wanted to see fall off the bone, this is exactly what I'm talking about. We're gonna pull a couple of bones out with this simple flick of the wrist. There you go. There's one, pulls out clean, all right? That's how you know those ribs are done. They are tender. That bone, you give it a very simple twist. The meat pulls away, it pulls away from the gristle at the top and it pulls out smooth, it pulls out clean. And it, I mean, it just doesn't get much better than that. You can pull out all the bones, throw the meat in between a couple of pieces of bread, slap some pickles on there, your favorite barbecue sauce, and boom, you got a good old fashioned rib sandwich, all right? Don't forget to save that juice in the bottom of the foil after you're done cooking. It's really gonna help keep that meat moist as you're reheating it down the road, okay? And now, without any further ado, here is a close-up of the finished product, all right? Hey, I wanna thank you guys for tuning in. We appreciate you guys clicking on the video. Don't forget to click subscribe and cut on those notifications, and we'll see you guys on the next video, all right? Peace.